Hey everybody, it's Vic from Vic's Gaming Corner. You wouldn't believe how many outtakes I had to do to actually say that right today, because I was actually using my old brand. Anyway, hat or no hat? Uh, you know, we're gonna go with no hat. Although I, I think I would prefer a beanie. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna get started here. As you can see, I am, oh, my hair is a mess. I am going to talk about face cam and Stream Deck integration and using your Stream Deck Plus or your Stream Deck or your Stream Deck XL. Um, I don't have the Stream Deck regular MK.2 with me. My baby sister has it. She is using that thing and she loves it. And um, I can tell you, I have the XL and I have the, um, Stream Deck Plus. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video today. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's get started. We're going to actually um, jump into showing the Stream Decks now that I'm getting better at doing this. Uh, the cool thing is with Camera Hub, you can actually control a lot of things just using, well, right now I'm using Epic Cam, but uh, let's go ahead and uh, Turn the flash on so y'all can see things much better. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna probably do is, yeah, reduce the brightness a bit, just so that way y'all can see things pretty clear. Uh, did you know you can use AR lenses in this? I, I, this is totally unrelated, but um, it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna close that. And yeah, my, my thing auto hides now, so that's pretty cool. The other thing is I am using NVIDIA broadcast with my face cam, so y'all are gonna see like full on eye contact from now on. Um, but I think that's really cool. So let me go ahead and pull up Stream Deck here, cause this is what the final is gonna look like on your Stream Deck or Stream Deck XL. Um, and on your Stream Deck Plus, it's gonna be very different and it's so much easier than having this one page. So as I do with everything, I usually create a template for you all. And we're gonna to go to that right now. So it takes me directly to this page right here, this profile I should say, um, because I am profile switching. And this is the really cool thing, like when I am actually like doing everything from my Stream Deck, I come here, you can turn this on, off, right? And it takes me directly to my profile just for this. And yeah, this is all I use for my recording on uh, OBS for my YouTube videos. That's, that's all I need right here. Um, and then we're gonna go back to page one and we're gonna tap on the face cam. And it's gonna take me to a blank profile, which is where we're gonna get started. Now, if you're doing it on a stream deck, you can control face cam, which is the camera hub thing that we just saw here that I was discussing. Um, this thing right here, it basically is gonna be something that you can control each device. So you can switch between devices here. Um, for those who are wondering, how do you use Epic Cam? And this is completely unrelated to the video I was working on right now, but I might as well just show you all because it's in Camera Hub. Everything is unified in Camera Hub now, which I think is amazing. So you would come here and you would select your device and then you would just make sure that when you're setting it up in OBS that it's displayable on OBS. But in this case, we're gonna be working with our face cam. So I could come here, but then it would turn off my Epic Cam, which is weird. I have to actually have Epic Cam selected in order for me to display things. But we're not gonna mess with this. We're gonna actually just close this out because we don't need it right now. What we do need is to come over here and we're gonna actually look for our camera hub, which is right here. Um, if you need to find it, it is actually going to be, oh, I totally wrote that wrong, in your Stream Deck plugin store. So for example, I could just click on buy Elgato and it'll take me to everything I need. And we're gonna look for Camera Hub, which is right here. It's your video editing, or I mean your, your video control. So this is not the one by Bar Raider for um, face cam. This one is directly from Elgato. It's called Camera Hub. All right, so mine is installed, as you can see right here. Now you can make this like sliders, just like you saw like mine and you can select your inputs if you need to. So we could choose the Epic Cam or the Face Cam. And in this case, I could actually toggle between them. We'll put one on each side so that way I know this is going to be my Face Cam and this is going to be my iPhone. Um, and I think that's a really cool feature that you can toggle between them. Now, let's, let's go to 
changing backgrounds. Now, you're not going to see me change my background because I'm using a green screen and I'm also using NVIDIA Broadcast, which is going to give you more direct eye movement as I'm actually talking. So like, it's kind of like looking at the chat and your eyes just kind of go up. It's, it's weird. We've been playing around with it for a couple of streams, but it's pretty awesome. It still needs some tweaking. It definitely, it's kind of like an overlay on top of a hat. So hat wearers, be be wary. It, it's going to basically make like your eyelids appear on your hat. It's weird. I don't wear hats. I prefer beanies because uh, there's there's this ongoing joke with crabs right now. But we're, we're going to continue with our video here. <laughs> All right. So we can click on display properties, right? Display properties. We can do it for our face cam because this is really the camera that we're going to be controlling or your face cam pro. Um, there is one thing that face cam pro has that I don't and I believe that's focusing. I don't have that on here, so I cannot talk about that in this video. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and come here, and it looks like we are gonna have to switch our device. So let's go ahead and oh, it turned off the stream deck, y'all. That's okay. You know what? We'll come back to it. That's okay. Let's uh for now. We'll go ahead and turn that off for a second, and then we'll toggle back. Alrighty. So now we can select our property. So the first one that's on the list is going to be contrast. And what I'm going to do is copy and paste and then go to the next one. So the next one is exposure compensation. The next one is going to be ISO. And for those who don't know ISO, it is something that's actually done in photography with actual DSLRs, um, even people who are using them for video recording. So I think that that's amazing that Elgato has that set up with their software. I think that's really cool. So this is telling you what everything is set at. The reason why I have it this way is so that way I know where everything is. Um, and I don't want to actually like set it or change it. I just want to see what it's displayed as. So if you want to change it or set it, you can actually come here to set property and it'll set your, let's see, automatic. Actually, you know what? let's make this bigger. I'm so sorry, everybody. So this is going to be where we could set our exposure mode, right? We can turn it on or off if we want it to, to be auto. I don't want to set it. I want to have full control over it. So when I am controlling it, I want to be able to adjust. And that's going to be the next thing that we talk about. So I'm going to leave adjust there for right now. But we're going to continue on with the display. So this one was saturation. This is going to be sharpness. The next one is going to be shutter speed. And shutter speed is important when it comes to lighting. OK, this is going to be white balance. Right now, I'm probably appearing very warm. I have two lights on me, and they're actually cooling. <laughs> but uh, because of my skin tones, it's, it's natural to my skin. But I, I'm on the more warmer colors. Um, all right. And then there's Zoom. OK, Zoom is a thing. So with the adjustment, right, what I'm going to do is come here and put them in each of these. So the first one I'm going to select is going to be Contrast. And it says icon style, static, slider vertical, or horizontal. I like vertical sliders. And if you wanted horizontal, you could do horizontal. I'm not doing horizontal, though. We're going to do vertical. And the reason why is because I'm stacking everything in sections. So this one is going to be contrast, static, vertical. Now, what I'm going to do is actually come here to do the dial minus 10. So now I can actually change the contrast. And as you can see, it's changing the, the background of me darker, lighter. And I can't show you all yet with my hands, but I will as soon as I switch the input again. And then the, the camera would turn back on from my iPhone. Um, so that's the only drawback about it is you can't have both of them being controlled in Camera Hub to set up the settings yet. So maybe I can submit a feature request or something, which is OK. I mean, you can toggle between them and do it. So it's not a big deal. All right. So the next one is going to be exposure. So we're going to select our property. We're going to go to exposure. This one is static plus one. We're going to actually change that to vertical. Now, the reason why the exposure is not showing up here is because I think exposure is probably on auto for me right now. And then we're going to come here. We're going to go to exposure. And this time we're going to do it minus one. 
but we're gonna change it from static to vertical because I like vertical. Um, that's the really cool thing between Wavelink and Facecam is now you can make vertical sliders and it's all a push of a button and the sliders actually move so you're able to see that on your stream deck, which I think is amazing. All right, so the next one is ISO and basically what I'm gonna do is copy and then switch it to ISO. And I'm gonna do this for each of them because one of them is positive, one is negative. So we're gonna just continue to rinse and repeat and just change the um, property. So this one is saturation. And this one is sharpness. This one is going to be shutter speed. This one is going to be the um, white balance. And then zoom. Alrighty, now zoom is a <laughs> something fun to play with every now and then. And I don't know if you've ever watched Delgado's streams, but they're funny. Um, Jasmine was playing with the sliders and stuff with her face cam pro. It's pretty awesome. Alrighty, so this one we agreed was ISO. And this one is the next one in line, which is saturation. And we're just rinsing and repeating. Sharpness. Oh, wait, what did I do? Did I copy the wrong one? I think I did. Okay, let's go to sharpness. Oh no, I did do it right. We just got to minus that. Okay, no, there we go. Cool. All right, next one is going to be shutter speed. And the next one is going to be white balance. Now you see how easy this is when you're rinsing and repeating and you're just copying and pasting and then there's zoom. So zoom, uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and set up the bottom bars real quick here. And then, and then we'll do that. So you can actually refocus, right? But that doesn't work for me because <laughs> I don't think my camera is capable of that. But um, that is a feature. I'm gonna delete it because I don't need it. So here's the changing the backgrounds that I was mentioning earlier. You can come in here and choose whichever one you want. You can change it to the living room, etc. cetera. Um, again, I'm using a green screen, so you're not gonna see some of those things. All right, and then you can reset your properties and you could actually do them individually if you wanted, but we're not gonna do that because you can control them here with the sliders, no big deal. The way that I had my stuff set up, I had it as the porch sunset because I liked the background. Um, I actually do like that I can toggle, but I think I'm gonna keep them separate here. I had one more which was blur. And this is, you know, like if you're doing something in Discord and you're not using your green screen, you can blur your background, etc. The reason why I'm not doing that is because I have red carpet. It looks horrendous. I'm not going to show you all my room. <laughs> it's my office. It's horrible. I mean, I love my office, but all you're going to see is the sugar gliders in the back. They're going to get the light. It's not cool. It's late for them. All right. And then I believe I did have uh, take a snapshot, which is a really cool thing because you can actually take a snapshot, it'll save it, and then you're gonna be able to use that later as a clip. So for me, I, I won't be using that um, only because I don't need to worry about that right now, but when I'm streaming, I do take snapshots from time to time. This is pretty much what you're gonna need in a nutshell. Now, if you wanted to do additional backgrounds, you can. like. It, you can come here, you can drop down to the, the white background, you can drop down to the uh, black background, y'all can drop down to the uh, light blue home office. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff. And we just basically completed it on Stream Deck XL, where you, know, you set up the ones that you primarily use for your regular Stream Deck, which is the 15 key. Right now I'm using the 32 key. But what about Stream Deck Plus, right? Well, we're gonna get there. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like here. And it's literally just a dial stack. And it does everything, but you're just turning a dial. So as I mentioned, we needed to switch back, right? So it should turn on. I might have to open up Camera Hub and switch it, but I think it turned back on. I believe, oh, wow, we flipped it. Okay, <laughs> let me fix that real quick. I knew we were flipping something. I just didn't realize what we were flipping. <laughs> okay, hold on, y'all. Um, oh, my. 
And now I have to go back here and play with this for a second. <laughs> I wasn't anticipating this. All right, so I got it flipped over. Now y'all can see my hand, everything looks normal. We're probably gonna zoom in just a bit. All right, so now that we're zoomed in, we're gonna talk about the camera on Stream Deck plus creating a dial stack. Alrighty, so we're gonna go to where it says Camera Hub and adjust property because it's the only option it's gonna give you. So from here, we're gonna actually select our face cam. Oh, it's still gonna do that, okay. It's gonna be difficult for a second. I wasn't expecting that. So it's gonna turn off Every time that you toggle between your device, it's going to turn off one thing, right? So right now we're going to have to wait till that thing comes back on. And I know it's going to be distracting. So what I'm going to do is actually turn it off for right now. Go back to the page that we're working on, which is the dial stack. And we can come in here now and we can adjust the property. So we can select contrast. And we're just basically going to copy and paste and do the drop down to exposure. Right, and then we're gonna go to ISO. Now, if you notice a little blue circle, that's the one that you're primarily on right now. So as you cycle through them, you'll see that it's highlighting through it. All right, so the next one is going to be, let's see, this one was ISO. All right, so then this one is gonna be saturation. This one is going to be sharpness shutter speed, white balance, and zoom. All right, so this is a really cool thing about zoom, right? So we're gonna cycle through and it's gonna tell us what we're doing right now. And I'm choosing zoom. And so it says the multiplier, we can do it times one. Oops, I accidentally hit something real quick here. So what I'm gonna do is actually appear bigger on the screen in Camera Hub and actually drop off of the one here in OBS. And I am going to, hi again. All right, so now I'm going to show you, and I wish I could show this. Let me see if it'll let me do it. Oh, weird, it's not supposed to choose that. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I can't show you what I'm doing with the dials while I'm actually playing with this because it's putting me on both of them. So what we're gonna do is just have it set up on Camera Hub right now. And what I'm gonna do is use the Stream Deck Plus, which means I have to move the mic over here so you all can hear me. Now I'm gonna change the saturation, just a dial. As you can see, I'm getting you know black and white here. And then I'm gonna go back to color. Now I'm gonna cycle through the next thing, which is sharpness, right? So if I wanted to, I could get super sharp. Um, I always keep it at plus three, so that way I don't look like I have Scooby-Doo eyes because <laughs> if I do this, the softer I go, the more that things are blending. Uh, the other thing is I'm really zoomed in and I will show you what I'm talking about. So uh, shutter speed, shutter speed is important. So the lower you go, the darker it gets, right? And when I say the lower, I'm at one slash 120 of a second. Now, I keep mine at 1 slash 60 because that's perfect for the settings and you don't actually see ghosting with my hand or anything. I told y'all I use a green screen. Um, and lighting is important. So, you know, I, I keep my lights at a pretty good balance of light, but I also make it to where it's not overpowering to my creatures because the brighter it is, the more I could actually drop the ISO. But I can't do that just because I have sugar gliders. Um, let's see, the next one is the white balance. So like I could go cooler. Actually, that's not bad. 
but I have I have a bit of a a tan right now, so well, not a super tan, but I was out in the sun. Alrighty, and then the next one is Zoom. So y'all could see like, oh yeah, those are eucalyptus leaves over there. But y'all can see things, right? <laughs> so there's the green screen. And then, yeah, so that that's pretty much how I have everything set up. In case y'all are wondering about everything, where everything is, and how big the room is, it's pretty big. Um, the next thing is contrast. So like, you know, you could look fuzzy, faded. You can go darker. All right, and then let's see, exposure. Oh, I think I have auto. Do I have it on auto? I think. Oh, there we go, exposure. So if you put exposure on auto, I think it turns off your ISO, so it does it automatically for you, right? But I don't like having that set that way. I like mine a specific way. So I have mine at 1 slash 60 on the shutter speed and my ISO at 1000. And that's because it's, you know, still kind of bit dark just because of the lighting, but not too dark. As you can see, the more that you keep it lower, I'm sorry, the more that your lighting is low, the more that you're going to have all of this noise going on here. So noise reduction is a thing. And yeah, that, that's that's really bad noise. But that's important when it comes to cameras. Um, and that's why things look the way that they look. It, they're, they're different things that you toy around with when it comes to lighting, when it comes to where you're actually sitting, et cetera. But the cool thing is you can adjust that all with a dial. So now we're going to actually switch. Is it letting me? Oh, I'm on the wrong one. I see what I did. Here we go. So now we're gonna switch back so you all can see this right here. So as we cycle through, oh, I guess I have to do a separate one for the iPhone, but it's basically going to be this setup right here. And when we come in here, we're able to see each of the dial stacks. I wonder if it might show it on my page one. Yeah, it's saying to turn on the face cam. So it's probably not going to show you all that, which is okay. You know, it, it, you all are able to see that I can turn the dial and it'll do all of that for me. Now, if I were to turn off the, the iPhone, then you all would be able to see the face cam and the options through the software, but y'all wouldn't be able to see it real time here and it won't let me do that at this time. So um, maybe I can suggest that as a feature request for Elgato, but that's how you're gonna be able to set up your Stream Deck, your Stream Deck XL and your Stream Deck Plus with cameras. Um, for face cam, face cam pro, um, Epic Cam has a, a bit of things that you can do and control, which I think is really amazing that you can do it in software. But I would like to see that Elgato would allow you to do multifunctions on the cameras at one time and not separate devices where you have to select them. Um, maybe that might be something they bring out in the future. At least I'm hoping for it. But uh, other than that, it'll make it a lot easier to show you all these videos when that happens, like how to, how to do things real time. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good night.